In this video, we are going to focus on making sure that our spawner is able to handle different types of prefabs. We will achieve this goal by using dynamic buffer. According to the documentation, a dynamic buffer component is a component that acts as a resizable array of unmanaged structs. As we can read, we have the length of the buffer, the capacity, and the pointer that indicates the data stored. In Baker, we can add a number of different buffers similar to component data. In the case of our game, we can dynamically change the list of prefabs at runtime in the future. So I implement the possibility to extend the functionality thanks to dynamic buffer. We could use blob asset, but it is definitely more difficult to implement correctly. And we are also close to the possibility of adding prefabs, for example, depending on the path the player takes in the game, or depending on progress. Ok, let's move on to Rider, specifically Bullet Spawner Aferin. Let's add a field that stores a list of game objects, and a getter that allows reference from Baker. Now we can go back to Unity and create a Bullet Prefab variant. And don't worry, it's not Kang variant from Marvel. Right click on bullet, create, prefab variant. Let's choose a variant and modify the sprite to say... this element. Save the changes and move on to the ECS scene. Let's select bullet spawner and set bullet references in bullet prefabs. Then go back to the code and go to bullet spawner component data. In order to properly implement dynamic buffer, we need a struct that will store the prefab and, more importantly, will implement the iBuffer element data interface. Dynamic buffer only accepts structs that implement this interface and have unmanaged code. Also create a public field of type entity bullet prefab. Let's remove the prefab field in the component data, we won't need it anymore. Now we are able to add a buffer in Baker through the add buffer bullet buffer element data. Let's rewrite or release into a buffer, creating new structs of type bullet buffer element data in for each loop. Adding to the buffer is similar to adding to the list. Of course, the pass prefab parameters should be wrapped via get entity. And let's remove bullet prefab from the parameters in component data. Since we added the buffer in the baker, we also need to create a field in the aspect to inject dynamic buffer. So let's go to the bullet spawner aspect and add a private read only dynamic buffer field. Now we can wrap instance randomization in the randomize instance method. Let's create a get random prefab method that returns an entity. We will call randomize instance at the beginning, then get a random number from 0 to the length of the buffer. Now, just like with arrays, you can retrieve the prefab at the given index from the buffer. Great! All that's left to do is to make a fix in bullet spawner system. Let's change bullet spawner aspect.bullet prefab to bullet spawner aspect random prefab. And that's it! After all our efforts, let's go back to Unity, turn on the stats and hit play. As we can see, thousands of bullets with different visualizations are moving on the screen. Well done! In the next video, we will focus on how to handle jobs in ECS. This will give us an extra performance boost. Thank you for your time. I hope you learned something. I encourage you to support us on Patreon. And see you soon in the next video.